on behalf of the Open University of Sudan, I present and broadcast this recording, which is copyright. With me here inside the studio are a number of students who are keen on participating and learning, and they are very desirous of participating, of taking part in this class. In today's lecture, we are going to have the writing skills. But before that, let us ventilate the class, ventilate the lecture by mentioning a story, which is very important when we start lecturing. You know, the story is about two people. These people used to go on vacation when the school closes for holidays. They were named Peter and John. They went to the train station because they like traveling by train. So they went to get their tickets. You know, English pocket. They each bought a ticket and they put their luggage inside the train. Unfortunately, Peter's ticket fell off his pocket. Henry saw it and did not say a word about it to his friend. When the ticket collector started collecting and looking at people's tickets, Henry started searching his pockets for his ticket, but he didn't find it. So John wanted to play a trick on his friend. So he took the two tickets and put them in his pocket. And when the ticket collector came nearer, he gave him two tickets. Henry hid under the seat of the train. Peter gave him two tickets. He said to the ticket collector, one belongs to me and the other belongs to my friend who likes traveling under the seat of the train. So <laughs> this is the joke. Uh, we are going to talk about, you know, we are going to talk about the skills of the English language first before we talk about the writing skills. Any and each language has four skills. Do you know what are they? Who can tell me about the language skills? Do you have any idea? Any language skill? Yes, please. Writing. Writing this is number one. Listening. Listening. Reading. Reading. Speaking. Speaking. Marvelous. But we put them in order. We put them in order. We put them in order. Shall we start from the beginning or shall we proceed? Shall we start from the beginning? Yes, please. Uh, there are four skills in each and every language. Can you tell me what are they? Yes, well, please. Mm. Writing skills, uh, writing skills, mm. reading skills, um, speaking skills, and... Uh, Listening skills. Listening skills, marvelous. And we begin with the last. We have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. You put them in order. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But when we come to each one, we, we each one has a skill. For example, writing has skills. The writing skills involve, you know, your handwriting, might be cursive style, might be print script. All these are very important when you write. And you embrace your reader. Let us begin, unit one, writing at level of a letter. First, we have level of a word, level of a letter, level of a paragraph, and level of a sentence. But let us take one by one. We start by saying writing at letter Level. Letter, not message. Letter of the alphabet. A, B, C. The letter of the alphabet. Let us start. Are you ready? Off we go now. Uh, in this introduction, we talk to the student. 
here and we say this is one of five units that make up the basic writing skills. The five units focus on, this is very important, writing at level of the letter, as I said, writing at the level of a word, writing at the level of a sentence, and last of which is writing at the level of a paragraph. But before tackling these, we would like to mention that we also have a fifth one, which is writing about banquetation. We also write uh, through banquetation and about banquetation because it is very important. Without banquetation, you might not be able to embrace your listeners, to embrace your readers. And people, by the way, people judge you by the way you speak. People judge you by the way you speak. But sometimes people also judge you by the way you write. If you write correctly, you might be able to embrace your readers. Your readers might not have any difficulty in following you. So let us begin. Here we are. Although most of the materials in these, in these five units might seem obvious to most students, it is the, that obviousness which makes them very important. In fact, a lot of the problems which the students, especially at advanced levels, suffer from have their roots in these areas, which we are going to mention them one by one. So, because most, of stud most of students have already developed bad handwriting habits, they find it difficult to get rid of them. Because also most students have long been using words incorrectly, in a wrong way, and inappropriately, they continue to use them like that, and eventually, at last, they become fossilized errors. We say these fossilized errors, errors which have turned into stone form and may change by the passage of time. Also because, of, because some students have not studied banquetation, as I told you about banquetation, systematically, they tend to use it haphazardly. Haphazardly, not in a systematic way. Haphazardly means randomly. They just use it. They just put it. So this unit also focuses on handwriting. It is clear that handwriting is important. Why is it important? Let me ask you this question. Again, your question, please. Shoot up your question, please. Your uh, question. question. Uh, your answer. Your answer to my question. Why is handwriting important? Okay, uh, to do uh, documentation for what we uh, do. Yes, uh, for documentation, handwriting is very important. And for the reader as well. Your reader might be impressed by your handwriting. If your handwriting is legible, readable, he or she can follow you smoothly. But if your handwriting is illegible, which is unreadable, he might get astray. He might, he might not follow you in the proper way you like. So this unit focuses on handwriting, as I said. It is clear that handwriting is important because it is the first thing which faces the reader. If the handwriting is legible, as I said, readable, it will be easy for the reader to follow you, to follow your message. If it is illegible, unreadable, your audience, audience here means reader, your audience, the one who reads what you write, will have a hard time communicating with you. He will not a be able to communicate with you because your handwriting is too bad. So he might, he might not be able to follow you the way you like. So the bad news, let us begin with the bad. Bad news. The bad news is that all people, including native speakers, the people who have the language as their origin, can have problems with handwriting. So you don't have to worry. The language is not ours. So the native speakers do make bad handwriting sometimes. Even Homer's notes, as we say. So they can have bad problems with handwriting. The good news, let us mention it, the good news is that it is always possible to improve our writing. This is very good news. It might need some time and effort, but 
it is worthwhile, important, enjoyable, interesting, worth spending time and effort on. So these are the criteria of writing. Let us have this brief view. Welcome to unit one of this book. Now, that was the news in brief, and you shall have it in details right now. This unit has two main sections. Section one is about the English alphabet, ABC. Before the interval, we were discussing the two sections about writing skills. So we mentioned two sections about writing. Can you tell me what are they? What are the two sections? Section one deals with, huh? Deals with what? Yes, please. Letter formation, marvelous. How to build up letters, how to build up letters with regard to their size, regard to their shape, regard to everything concerning them. And what, what is section two? Uh, English alphabet. The English alphabet from A to Z. That's marvelous. Now let's have a look here. Let's have a look. Let us overlap the page and have a look at the two sections together. Section two is about letter formation. It gives information about the shapes, as I said, the sizes of letters. It shows how letters are properly, are properly written. So, like all the, the units in this book, this unit has three subsections. We have main sections and subsections. The main section is the title. And the subsection is the one follows it. Bas basic information, the main sections, exercises, self-assessment questions. We abbreviate, we abbreviate it. We abbreviate it also. S A Q S. Self-assessment questions by your side. Self-assessment questions. Now. Let us have number four, which is activities. Activities done by the student also. Practice makes perfect. This is a well-known proverb in English. Practice makes perfect. Unless you practice, you may, not, you may not be able to use your language. For example, there are people who know, for example, 100 words in English, but they are unable to communicate with others, to use them. Some people who know 50 words only, but they can write letters and they can communicate. It is not a matter of how you know, how much vocabulary you know, but it's a matter of how can you deal with this vocabulary. You keep your, yourself simple and specific. Objectives of the unit, the targets of the unit, by the end of this unit, you are expected to, number one, form the letters of the English alphabet correctly from A to Z. Also, you might be able to make your written work more legible, more readable, more re re uh, readable to the reader, readable that, than it has been before. So, also we come to evaluate your own handwriting. You give assessment to yourself. You give assessment to your handwriting. And that of others. Also you evaluate other, other people's handwriting. There are 26 letters in English, in the English alphabet. They come into two sets. Uppercase, which is capital letters, you know, a sentence begins with a capital letter. A sentence begins with a capital letter. And we have lowercase, that's small letters. Small letters which join at the top. And also, they, they appear in two forms. These sections appear in two forms. Form number one, about handwriting. For example, Open University of Sudan. Number two, Print script, 
Open University of Sudan. Print script means through the typewriter, through computer. But handwriting is using your hand. Generally speaking, there are slight differences, not big differences. Slight differences between handwriting, handwriting letters, letters which are written in handwriting, and print script letters, letters which are written in print script. However, sometimes the differences are big, and sometimes the differences are small. But that does not bother. Don't bother about it. Handwriting has two forms also. Your handwriting has two forms. The first form is cursive, which is joined together. Cursive style means joined together. And the other handwriting, print not joined. Print is not joined. For example, if you have a look through the cursor here, if you have a look at these, for example, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is written in print, not in handwriting. So let us move on now. When it comes to handwriting, we need to differentiate. To differentiate means to tell which is which, to differentiate between two things. The first thing, handwriting. We have to differentiate between handwriting. For example, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And also calligraphy. Calligraphy is a beautiful handwriting. We normally don't use this calligraphy because this calligraphy can be for the beautification of your handwriting. The aim of this unit is to improve our handwriting. It is not to teach calligraphy. You know we are not going to teach calligraphy at all. Self-asked questions. What do you think the following abbreviation mean? Discuss your answers with a small group of your colleagues. Colleagues means fellow workers. For example, we have the abbreviation ATM. What does it stand for? ATM. Who knows? Yes, please. ATM. ATM. It's an, an abbreviation for automated teller machine. Marvelous. That's wonderful. Abbreviation for automated teller machine. You draw, you withdraw money through ATM. And we have a famous one, which is BBC. Can you tell me the BBC abbreviation for what? Uh, BBC. We all hear the BBC broadcasting station. Huh? BBC, abbreviation for what? BBC. B stands for British. The other B stands for broadcasting, air transmission, and the C stands for corporation. British Broadcasting Corporation. This is the abbreviation. So if we go to the other abbreviation, to other set of abbreviation, FAQ. Who knows? FAQ. Marvelous, yes? Again, please. Mm. Uh, it is uh, frequently asked questions. Well, wonderful. That's marvelous. Fantastic. Frequently asked questions. That's marvelous. So if we, if we miss one and, uh, and ask about it later, just like triple W, triple W, 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 W. What does it stand for? Triple W. Yes, please. Triple W stands for? Uh, world Wide Web. Marvelous. World Wide Web used by all people to have access to computer. Marvelous, that's right. Thank you very much. Thank you all. So let's have letter formation and rules for good handwriting. Look at the following samples, which I'm going to mention of handwriting. They are all taken from actual writing by university students. What do you think about them? Give me your opinion. Rules for good handwriting, which sample which samples can be described as good, which can not be described as good, can be described as bad, for example. Huh. What do you think of this handwriting? You see it on the monitor. Huh. What do you think of it? Do you have any idea? Is it good or bad? Huh? Yes, through the mic. Uh, in my opinion, it is bad because Ma there is no space between the paragraph. Number one, 
And number two? And uh, also there is uh, mistakes. There are a number of mistakes. Yeah, Marvelous. Number of mistakes. Thank you very much. This handwriting is too bad. The spacing, the shape of the letters, the, the size of the letters, this is incorrect. All of it, it is incorrect. It is not right. So let us have another example. How, what do you think of this one? What do you think of this one? Huh? What do you think of this one? This handwriting. What do you think of it? Yes, please. I think it is good because uh, the spaces between the letters, letters. Uh, are good and the spaces between the paragraphs are good also. Yes, they are, they are adequate, adequate, reasonable. They are reasonable. Yes. It is not that good, but it is more than bad. And now let us have a look at this third one. One day, the fox jumped over, for example, the lazy dog. L let's have a look at this, this one. What do you think of it? Huh? What do you think of it? Yes, please. Hmm. I think it is uh, uh, bad handwriting. Uh, because? Uh, because there is uh, 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 large spaces. Yes, where? with regard to spaces, they are not accurate. They are not uh, inadequate. They are inadequate. Not reasonable. Thank you very much. And what about the fourth one? This is the fourth one. Huh? Look at the fourth one here. Look at the fourth one here. What, are, what do you think of it? What do you think of it? The fourth one. Yes, please. I think it is bad because uh, the, the font is uh, too large. That's right. That's right. And it is too the cursive. No, the, yes. yes, intermingling, Arno joined yes. together for too much, joined together for too much, but that's too bad. Rule number one, good handwriting. Good writing is based on a pattern of ovals. You know ovals? The oval, you see, the oval shape here, let me tell you about the oval shape. This is the shape of an egg. This is oval shape. So, Good handwriting, and good writing is based on a pattern, on a style of ovals, like these, ovals. These are oval shapes, oval shapes, and parallel lines. Parallel lines, this is the parallel line, parallel lines. We call them parallel lines because they never meet. This is a good handwriting. And now let us see something else. All the small letters join at the top. All the small letters join at the top. Small letters. This is a small a. It is joined at the top. And another example also. All the down strokes are parallel. You know down strokes? For example, this is a down stroke. Down stroke. And we join through it. We join through it. And now let's have another look here. All similar letters, letter which look like the same, are the same height. All similar letters are the same height. The same height, you know. All down strokes are equidistant. Equidistant means equally far away from each other. We, you keep distant. You keep the distant like you perceive them. You just think of them. You don't have to measure them. You don't have to measure them. But the distance is the same here. And let us have another example, which is the last one, I think. The space between words is the width of the small letter O. The space between words, just like O here, just like an O here, you see? So you have to keep your handwriting into this space and you don't have to push them, push the letters together too much. If you push the letters together too much, the reader might get bored and might be tedious, might be monotonous. So please be careful when you write. Rule number seven, ascenders and descenders are no more than twice the height of small letters, um, probably less. For example, let us clarify this point. We have ascenders, for example, this is the ascender, 
of an H ascenders, which, going, which means going up. The stroke goes up. This is ascender. And we have descender, for example. This is descender, P. Descender going down. Ascenders going up. And believe it or not, letters have bodies. For example, this is a body of an A. Letters have bodies. Also, letters have legs. As we have legs, we can walk. Letters have legs. They can stick on. They have legs. Letters have legs. Believe it or not, also, capital letters are no higher than the ascenders. Probably less than that. For example, if you have a capital letter, you leave it and then you write after it. Braza. Brava. For example, you leave the capital letter, you don't join anything with it. Let us have another look at lines of writing are far enough apart for, for ascenders and descenders, not to touch. They don't meet together. They are parallel lines. Letters which finish at the top join horizontally. Horizontally means going on a straight line. They join horizontally. Look at these. And also, letters which finish at the bottom, downwards, join diagonally. Diagonally means with a stroke like this. This is diagonal line, and this is straight line. This is straight line, and this is diagonal line. We have horizontal line, horizontal like this. This is horizontal, horizontal line. This is a straight line, vertical line, and this one is a diagonal one. Diagonal means it has, a, it has a slope towards the end. It has a slope. Let us have another example. This is rule number 12 and the last one. Letters which finish on a stroke moving left are best left unjoined. For example, if we have G here, I don't have to make a letter and deform the word. I have to have it like this. So if you join, if you join this, it becomes deformed. But if you leave it as, the, uh, as it is, it might be readable. See? So let us have this one, this time. Use the writing profile below. Dear students, we have to focus on the writing profile because it is very important when you write. The criteria for evaluation of handwriting, evaluation of handwriting means to assess and to evaluate the following pieces of writing. For example, the shape of the letter must be accurate. Must be accurate. And the size must be acceptable to people. The slope, the slope, uh, the strokes of the letter must be correct. And the last one, the, the, the spacing between letters and words must be adequate, must be reasonable. You see? All these criteria govern the way you write. And your reader might also be able to follow you in a smooth way. For example, look at this utterance. He is Russian. He is Russian. Is this, for example, is this handwriting good or bad? We might be able to evaluate. Is it raining outside? We might be also evaluating afterwards. The boy is happy. So let us have this. He is Russian. This is follow the norms, as we say. Follow the norms means the size, with regard to the size, with regard to the shape, with regard to the spacing. These are all correct and all acceptable. So let us have another one. Is it raining? The spacing is the same here. The spacing is the same. Is it raining? And we have the boy is happy. This is also good handwriting because the spacing, the shape, all of these, the slope, are all in buttons. They are kept button. Use the following. This is exercise number two. Use the writing profile below. The criteria for evaluation handwriting to evaluate the following pieces of writing. For example, I walk 
as a nurse in a hospital. Uh, let me stop here and ask you, does the word nurse belong to a male or female? Or both? Does the word nurse belong to a male or a female or both? The word nurse, does it belong? Yes, please. It's belong for, uh, for both of them. Marvelous. He is a nurse. She is a nurse. But don't go astray by saying that a nurse is a woman. No, that's incorrect. That's not right. He is a nurse helping a doctor. She is a nurse also helping a doctor by both criteria. So let us have copy the following letters. These are all the 26 letters. If you copy them down, you might get. Also, now copy the following paragraph in your own handwriting. Then evaluate it, assess it, make assessment according to the criteria above, the shape, the size, the sloping, and the spacing. Let us have, why is good handwriting important? This is a very nice question. Why is good handwriting important? Huh? You might see it on the monitor. Yes, please. It is important because mm. uh, handwriting is a means of communication between you and the reader. Marvelous. Wonderful. And your reader might be able to judge you by the way you write. If you write correctly, he might judge you in a better way. He might be able to follow smoothly your handwriting. But if you write in a bad way, he might get hard time in communicating with you. Thank you very much. Why is good handwriting important? Again, good handwriting is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, it gives your reader a good impression about you. It shows that you are confident about what you want to communicate. To be confident in speaking, to be confident in writing, to be confident in reading. So now there is one skill which is too difficult for our learners. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? One is skill of the fourth skill, listening, speaking, reading, or writing. One is very difficult. One is very difficult. Do you know what it is? You know what it is? Yes, please. I think <coughs> the speaking. Uh, Wonderful. That's marvelous again. Skills. That's marvelous again. Because some people listen very well. Some people read fantastically and neatly. Some people, when they write, they write very smart handwriting. But when they come to the speaking part, they cut a very poor figure behind others. They just stop. And we have what we call phobia. Phobia, you know? This is to fear, to fear when you speak. Some people do fear foreigners. You know, the love of foreigners and the hate of foreigners. What do we call them? Xenophile and xenophobia. Xenophobia, the love of foreigners. You love to speak to them. Try to get into that habit. But xenophile is you hate them. You shy away when they come. You shy away from them. It, is also, it also shows that, your handwriting I mean, shows that you are well organized. The organization of your handwriting intrigues the reader, as we say. Secondly, it helps the reader to read with ease and comfort at their disposal. And this part, he or she, I mean your reader, will want to continue reading your text if you write in a good way. Thirdly, it is important in examinations and assignments. Good handwriting will help the examiner and the tutor to evaluate your answers in a good manner. Answer the following questions. Where do all the small letters start? Do you know? Where do, we mentioned this within the period. Where do small letters start? Do they start at the top or at the bottom? Small letters. Small letters. Start at the top or at the bottom? Yes, please. There. It starts at the bottom. They start at the bottom. Marvelous. And likewise, on the contrary, the capital letters start at the top. That's right. That's right. 
How can we measure the space between words in a sentence or phrase? How can we measure it? How can we measure the space? How can we measure the space? By ovals, as we said, ovals. The shape of an egg, the shape of an egg by ovals. The oval letter is the shape of an egg here. So, which letter join horizontally, not vertically, and not in a diagonal, in a diagonal line, not diagonally? Which letters join horizontally? Again, the small letters join horizontally. And likewise, the capital letters join diagonally. Which letters join diagonally and horizontally? We, ma we answer that question. Complete the following statements. Statement means sentences. The dot of the letter is accurate. The dot of the letter is accurate. Must be accurate. Huh? The dot of the letter. Yes, please. The form of the letter. The shape. The shape of the letter. Marvelous. The form of the letter. Number two. The dot is acceptable. Yes? The space is acceptable. The size. The Sorry. size must be acceptable. The size. The size must be acceptable. And number three, the dot of the letter is correct. Correct. For example, the dot of the letter is correct. The slope. Slope of the letter must be correct. Slope. The slope of the letter must be correct. Going down diagonally. Going in. Yes. And the last one is... The spacing between letters and between words is, must be adequate. Adequate means reasonable. Adequate means reasonable. So let us move towards, we have a shape here, we have a diagram. Look at this diagram, please. Look at the diagram here. And I might be asking you about the ascender line, which goes up, the descender line, which goes down, the mean line, which, which, be, which occurs in the middle, and the baseline which occurs above it. So uh, let us have let us have the arrows. Let us have a look at the arrows. You know this arrow, we call it x height. This is an x height. And if we come to the main line, this is the cursor on it now. The mean line, mean line. And we have the baseline above it. And if we go right back. Here, we have the ascender, which goes up. And we have the descender at the last, which goes down. The, this diagram shows you the movement of your letters. Look here. Write the names of the parts of the letters below. The parts are in circles. So let us have number one. Huh? This is the leg. This is the leg of the letter. As we have legs and we walk, this is the leg of the letter. Now let's have this one. This is the body of the letter. And also here we have the body. Two bodies here, A and Y. And let's have this one. And M has a shoulder. A shoulder. And M has a shoulder. And this one has a descender descender line, descender line, J and Y. Let us have a look again at these important letters. Exercise one. Read the, uh, the paragraph below, then answer the questions that follow. Write the letters in capital letters and in small letters. This is very easy. My tutor is very nice. Tutor means teacher, but who teaches privately. Not a teacher at a school or university. A teacher, a school or university, this is a lecturer might be, but tutor is someone who lectures privately. For example, to have much money. Lectures privately. My tutor is very nice. He does not give us difficult homework. And most students like this one, like this part. They don't, wa they don't want to have homework. When we do it, when we do the homework, 
He does not use the red pen, the red pen to correct it. He does this in pencil. He uses a pencil. We like it. We like his way of dealing with us because in this method, big errors seem to be like little slips of the pen. Moreover, it is simple to rub the signs he uses after we do the correction. So they like the teacher, they want the teacher to correct their work in pencil, not in pen. Because if he uses the red pen, it will be impossible again to wipe what he has written. So why does the student think that the tutor is very nice? For two reasons. The story which you have heard now. Again, why does the student think that the tutor is very nice? Yes? Give him the mic, please. For two reasons. Yes, the first one uh, is uh, because uh, he gives easy exercises. Wonderful. He gives them easy exercises. Number two, uh, can yeah. you have a guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Uh, he corrects uh, their mistakes in pencil. In pencil, not in pen. Not in red, not in red pen. Yes. It might be a disaster if he corrects in red pen. Why does the student think that the tutor is very nice? Good, two reasons. He does not use the red pen to correct the homework. This is number one. And he uses a pencil instead. So what does he use for marking the homework? He uses a pencil. Because a pencil is erasable, easy to rub it. Why do the students like that way? For two reasons. Because big errors seem to be like little slips of the pen. Why do the students like that way? This is number one. Number two, do you like your work marked in red pen and why? Can you tell me? If you were at school and the teacher, you want the teacher to correct your work, do you want yourself to be corrected in pencil or in pen and why? You must associate your answer with why. Huh? Use pencil. Yes. In pencil. pencil. Marvelous. In pencil. Why? Because it is erasable. You can take it afterwards. After the teacher corrects it, you can take it. Thank you. So I don't like I don't like it. I don't like red. Red pencil is the sign of danger. This is number one. Sign of danger. It makes me feel bad. The student says it is a sign of danger and it makes me it makes him feel very bad. Does your own tutor follow the same way or a different one? Your own tutor at school. He does not use the same way. He uses the red pen. Just the opposite. The following text is in print script. Read it. I learned my ABC a long time ago. Do you remember when did you learn the ABC? Nobody remembers, I think. Sir. Is that right? Nobody remembers. Because this seems like your birthday. Nobody remembers when we were children. <laughs> Nobody remembers, do they? I learned my ABC a long time ago. Now I am a university student. Why do you want me to, pra to practice writing the alphabet? The answer is quite easy. If he asks me this question, I will be able to answer him, practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the perfect you become. And let's have the following text in print type. We said about this. Do you think that my handwriting is good? Is not good? Yes, I agree that it is not beautiful. But I myself, can read it easily. The following text is in print script. Some people also do not find it difficult to read. To be frank, frankly speaking, I do not write with a pen or a pencil very much these days. Do you know why? Because of globalization. Because of globalization. You know, globalization made everything easy, but one has to be careful. When I text message, I use my mobile keypad. I use my mobile keypad. If I have an assignment, I usually do it that, I usually do it that way, do it through the globalization, through the computer. I type it out myself or I hire someone to type it for me, but you are right, I still need it for my examinations. So by hook or by crook, it is very important. The handwriting is very important. Only two minutes left and we will be able 
to answer the following questions. How many letters are there in the English language? This is very easy. How many letters are there in the English language? 26. 26 letters in the English language. And also, how many sets are there in the ABC? What are they? They are two sets. There are two sets, lowercase, uh, capital letters, uppercase, you know. And this will answer our question about the ABC. comes in two main forms. They are handwriting, cursive style, and print script. Okay. Before we end this lecture, we are going to ask the following question. Which letters in the print script are completely different from handwriting? The letters A, G, and I. You see, these are very important. These are the letters in print script, completely different. They are completely different from handwriting. And the last one is complete the following sequence. Sequence one coming after the other, of letters by adding the missing letters. F, G, H, I, F, G, H, I. You see, you, you just keep sequence. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You know, a number of students do not learn by heart, do not keep by heart the alphabets. And this is bad. This is too bad. For example, if I ask someone, Please say the A, B, C, say A, B, C, D. They just stop at intervals. And this is too bad. And uh, now let's have the last one. Complete the following sequences of letters by adding the missing letters. M, N, O, just like that. Complete the following sequences of letters by adding the missing letters. Q, R, S, R. It is not an R. R. And the last one is... For example, you have, again, you have the small letters, which is the lowercase, and you have the capital letters, which is the uppercase, and you come to have capital letters, uppercase also again, and we say with this, we conclude for today, and I hope to see you next time. Our next lecture will not be about letters. It will be our next lecture May Allah will, um, if nothing intervenes, our next lecture will be about the level of a word. Because we have writing at the letter level, writing at the word level. Next time, we will be able to speak at large with regard to the word, you know, to the word level. Thank you very much. Thank you for your turnout. I really appreciate your turnout today. Thank you very much for participating in this class. Thanks a lot. Thank you.